Hey everybody, uh, Pete Brown here. I just wanted to give you a, a quick overview of the Windows MIDI Services console, which is something that uh, uh, is available for use with the new Windows MIDI Services. So I have uh, two just regular uh, terminal windows open here. You can see the first one, I've typed in the word MIDI. That's the, the name of the console, cleverly uh, enough. And uh, since I didn't provide any parameters for it, it just... Um, uh, lists out the help. And you see there are a bunch of different things that we can do here at this top level. Um, we can uh, list things, like if I want to see all of the available uh, endpoints on the system right now, I can say MIDI enum endpoints, and it lists all of the different uh, types of um, ports, if you will, but we call them endpoints uh, now with uh, the inclusion of MIDI 2 that are available here. And you see they're all different uh, devices. I can also get properties on one. So if I say MIDI endpoint properties, and I pick one of those, I can say the montage here, for example, and you can see we have all the different properties uh, available to us about the montage. We have the, the name of it, as well as um, information like the serial number that's reported back to us, the manufacturer name that's reported to us. And then we also have MIDI 2.0 features that have been negotiated automatically by the service when the device was first uh, brought online. So for example, this tells us that it wants to use the MIDI 2 protocol. Uh, it's going to send, or it's not going to send, excuse me, um, jitter reduction timestamps, and it's not expecting to receive them. We see here it says, no, don't send me MIDI uh, 1 protocol messages, only send me MIDI 2 pro uh, protocol messages. And then we see we have four different function blocks available here that are all bi-directional and function blocks are a MIDI 2.0 concept. And then finally, we also have uh, parent device information and container and stuff here. Those are all things that are coming from the SDK. Um, there's uh, additional properties. I can say MIDI endpoint uh, properties verbose, and that's going to tell me even more about the, the montage in this case. And we see we get a lot more stuff here. Um, we also get the group terminal blocks, which were not displayed at first because we already have function blocks. Group terminal blocks are a MIDI 2.0 USB specific feature that is kind of overridden by function blocks here, but we provide all of that information to you as well as more uh, information about the device like the SysX IDs, um, product instance ID that's reported to us, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a bunch of stuff there if you want to see information about a device. Um, that's not the only thing uh, that you can do through the console, of course. So if you want to see incoming messages, I can say MIDI endpoint monitor. And I could see all the stuff that's coming in from the device here. So I'm going to monitor the montage. You see it's sending out these uh, active sensing messages all the time here. So it's a good way to see some basic stuff. Uh, and this, this words here, this is a MIDI... Um, UMP, uh, Universal MIDI Packet Word, and each of these different uh, values in here have specific meanings. Uh, for example, this is a, a type one message, it's in group zero, uh, and then there's the additional information about what message number and stuff is after that. Eventually, you'll begin to recognize some of these just like you would recognize some uh, for MIDI 1.0. Or the other option is if I were to expand this window out a bit here, because it gets kind of big, I can say MIDI endpoint monitor, monitor verbose, and I can monitor the montage again, and we get a lot more information back. And you see here, it actually tells you that the message type is active sensing. It tells you it's on group one, channel 15. It gives you some basic information about the, the time when it was received. And we can see that these are being sent out on a, on a fairly regular basis. Okay, so that's a bunch of information there that we can see. And of course, all the messages are time stamped. And we see it's sent out roughly every quarter second. All right, uh, let me make this window smaller again, pop it back over here, clear that. Um, another thing that we can do is, uh, so if I say um, MIDI endpoint monitor help, and I can see all the different options that are available there for when I'm monitoring. 
And some of those include actually capturing the data to a file. So one of the things that was done um, during the testing phases by our friends in Japan, uh, who have been doing a lot of the testing for devices with Windows MIDI services, is to use this to capture information from a file and then to use the send message file uh, uh, capability in the MIDI console here to send the file of data back uh, to the other device. And then they could have like a consistent test run where uh, they can just keep sending the files over and over to different devices to test things out. Uh, and there are also some other um, more developer focused features here that give you information about uh, um, if you're sending debug messages, there are special ways to send debug messages where you keep incrementing one of the last digits. And that's how we can make sure that uh, we don't end up skipping any messages. So there's, there's some stuff in there. Um, most of those things, except for the file capture and send are not going to be uh, something that um, uh, most customers are going to use. Uh, but let me show you how to use this to send messages and also uh, to um, receive messages. All right, so if I go back over here to uh, say MIDI endpoint monitor again, and if I go to the diagnostics loopback, so these diagnostics loop uh, loopbacks are endpoints that are always available in Windows MIDI services whenever the service is running. They're provided there so that if you don't have any MIDI devices at all, you can still do some basic testing. And what happens is anything that is sent to loopback A comes on the in of loopback B, and anything that's sent on the out of loopback B comes on the in of loopback A. So they're just cross-connected to each other. So I could say, uh, I'm going to monitor loopback B. And then over here in the other console, I can say, uh, MIDI endpoint send message, and I'm going to give it in hexadecimal format. Uh, it's going to be a type two message, which means it's only one word uh, long. And I'm just going to give it uh, some uh, um, garbage numbers here. So uh, 326, uh, 3827 bonus if you recognize that. Uh, so as long as I have eight digits, that's good. And I could say count um, 10 and that will send 10 messages over here. So if you look in the other window, as soon as I hit enter on this and select the loop back I'm gonna to send to, you'll see those messages pop up and you can see we have 10 messages that came through here. Um, did you figure out the number yet? It's the trash compactor in Star Wars. So there you go, a little, little bit of extra nerd trivia for everybody there. Now, interestingly, so I have this monitoring here. This is this is done. I mean, the, the monitoring is still going on, but the sending is all complete. I can send again if I want to here and it'll send another, um, another 10 messages over to that. Uh, but one thing that is something that everybody has asked us for in um, Windows in the past is to be able to see which devices actually have uh, MIDI, uh, MIDI ports or MIDI endpoints open. So one of the other things I can enumerate is what's called a session. So I say MIDI enum sessions. And if I look here, and I've got a bunch of stuff open here uh, in sessions. Now, some of the interesting things, we're, we're still working through some stuff here, but um, our WinMM client compatibility stuff is interesting because um, right now, whenever you open any audio endpoints, not just MIDI, but any audio endpoints, it's creating a session in Windows MIDI services. By the time this goes production, I, I believe we'll have this uh, uh, sorted out. But so you see here, Camtasia recorder, because that's what I'm using to record this shows up. Um, but the other stuff you'll see uh, is MIDI EXE. So that's monitoring uh, diagnostics loopback B. And that's actually this window right here. And then you see MIDI serve up here at the top. And you might wonder, what's What's this all about? Why does it have these three open? And the reason for that is I mean, midiserve.exe is actually the, the Windows MIDI services Windows service. And the MIDI 2.0 protocol has this concept of bi-directional communications with metadata capture. And so we need some way to always capture incoming metadata and property changes from devices, whether or not you have an active connection to them. So the MIDI service keeps a connection open to them just for the purpose of doing protocol negotiation and capturing that uh, all that extra metadata like function blocks and endpoint properties and, and some of the things that I showed you earlier. So that's what that is. And then MIDI.exe is obviously what we have over here. And uh, I'd mentioned the other stuff here. One is a terminal server because it has a um, a WinMM um, uh, audio connection open and same thing with Camtasia, which I've mentioned here. 
Uh, so I'm going to close that and you'll see the MIDI.exe will actually go away. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else do we want to show here? Um, if you want to get some information about the timestamps that you see and how to interpret them, I can type MIDI clock or MIDI time, and it comes back and it gives me information about those timestamps. And in case you are ever wondering how long it takes a 64-bit uh, number to wrap around where each, each digit represents about 100 nanoseconds, that's 29,000 years. Uh, so there's plenty of time we don't have to worry about uh, handling any, any number wrap in, in any of those. Um, but hey, if you have a PC that's up and running for 29,000 years, do let me know. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I assume you would be uh, coming back from the future to tell me about it. Um, so I, I should send message. Let me, um, I'm not going to actually do it because I don't have a file handy, but if I say MIDI endpoint send message file and I say help, this gives me information on how I'm going to send or how I can send a file. And we have very flexible format for the words that get sent over. These are just text files uh, where they have um, one um, MIDI UMP format message per line. Uh, and then um, that you can uh, replace the group index, et cetera, here. So again, it's very useful for sending uh, just basic uh, uh, information to a device. Now, you could use this if you want to, say, script uh, program changes or something like that as part of a setup process that you have for when you go uh, and um, uh, you're going to play it at a gig or something like that. You can just have a batch file or a command file or a PowerScript uh, uh, script or PowerShell script, excuse me, uh, that calls MIDI.exe here and sends over um, specific information to those devices maybe it's just one file and it's got a couple of program changes and it's got some control changes etc cetera, etc cetera. so there is some automation capability here just by using this um, the other thing you're you might be thinking is hey can i use this to send sysx um, you could but we actually have something that's purpose-built because most sysx today is not in ump format it's in uh, classic midi 1.0 byte format so if we go midi endpoint help here we'll see we have a bunch of different uh, options and one of those is to send sysx file and this is something that's in development right now it's not fully implemented uh, but it will enable you to send a file of midi 1.0 or uh, midi 2.0 sysx messages right now it does seven bit uh, binary if i remember correctly uh, to a compatible endpoint so you can use this to to um, you know, do those sysx dumps, right? And so if I want to do uh, MIDI endpoint send sysx file help, we can see all the properties for that. Uh, it lets us change uh, the group index for that. Uh, and I see I have some resource strings I have to put in here. You can, like I said, this is in development. Uh, but importantly on this is the delay in milliseconds between the messages. Now, uh, I had created a um, sysx sending, uh, it's called like the MIDI sysx transfer utility that's in the, the Microsoft Store and Windows, uh, specifically because there are a lot of old devices where it's very easy to flood the buffers when you're sending sysx messages to them. And the most reliable way to avoid that is to have a certain amount of delay in between each message that you send over. So in this case, uh, I've, I've implemented the same kind of functionality here in the console uh, so that you can, you know, tell it to pause, say, like two milliseconds in between each message or 10 milliseconds in between each, each message so that the device on the other end doesn't get flooded. And this really happens with a, a, a lot of older um, synthesizers from the 80s, but also a, a, a number of the... Um, USB to DIN MIDI adapters out there. Just really, they don't keep up very well. They don't have very large buffers. I mean, it's to be expected. It's no slight on those because the, the protocol is 31,250 uh, bits per second, which is pretty slow for today. So it's very easy to flood those. So anyway, so that's the type of stuff that's being built in here. Um, I would say the most useful thing in the MIDI services console, the stuff that folks use the most is monitoring an endpoint uh, because it's fast and it's very easy for you to see all the data that's coming in there. But again, there are, there are lots of other things that you can do with this uh, and uh, including getting information about the service Right, so it tells you that it's uh, it's running. Uh, if you run this in administrator mode, you can actually stop and start the service. So if I said uh, MIDI service help 
you'll be able to see that uh, um, there's the start and stop. There's ping functionality. So if you want to test to see if the service is responding, which again, in production, probably not a big deal during testing can be helpful. So I say MIDI service ping, and it comes back and it tells us uh, how many um, or, or how that uh, how that ping process went. You can even do it verbose. And it tells me all the messages there. And uh, I have a little bit of ugly word wrap on that. So let's try that again so you can see it better. There we are. Um, so it tells you the, you know, when it was sent and how long the messages took to turn around and whatnot. And it tells you each message was uh, 40 microseconds to, um, to, for the full round trip, et cetera. So it gives you some basic idea of the, about the health of the service. Um, not something that you're, you're going to need to do uh, in production, but I think it can be useful here. Uh, anything else about the console? I don't know. Let's see. MIDI. Help. Oops. Help. I'm trying to think what else we can do. Uh, MIDI. Numerous. I've built some things into this over the past year that uh, I don't even remember. So let's, let me make sure there's nothing else special in here. MIDI enumerate. Oh, it, it does have access to the older um, WinRT stuff. Uh, oh, and we can also look and see uh, MIDI num transport plugins it tells us all the plugins that we have available in the service we have the virtual midi one uh, uh available which enables us to do apt app midi the diagnostics one is always in place as i'd mentioned uh loopback midi is something that enables you to do simple loopbacks and then we have the two usb ones here uh, i'm currently working on network and some other um some other transports that will be listed in here eventually, but this is what we're going to ship uh, the first version with. Uh, you can do, uh, let's see, MIDI, Enum, Legacy, WinRT, API, Endpoints. Yeah, these are long. There are some aliases for some of these, though. And that gives us the WinRT MIDI 1.0 view of the devices on the system. You see this quite a bit because we have to break out... Um, all of these different uh, endpoints into one endpoint per group, but also there's um, there's some duplication here because before we're in box for good, um, we have two different things in Windows that are enumerating devices, so they tend to show up uh, twice on these. So you do that. Yeah, there's quite a bit in there. And we see the mon the montage here, for example, is a MIDI 1.0 compatible. Um, endpoint that we created for a MIDI 2.0 device using the, the WinMM backwards compatibility. I have another video that uh, shows that and talks about the multi-client support and whatnot, but this is the Montage M and this is output uh, for group one and it's a MIDI 1.0 uh, output. So your MIDI 1.0 application can talk to the Montage, which is speaking MIDI 2.0 uh, and we do all the translation and stuff inside the service. So you don't have to worry about that. All right, so that's a, a quick overview, I think, of the Windows MIDI Services console. Uh, I know uh, not everybody is necessarily comfortable dropping down to the command line, but there are some things here that uh, I think everybody will find useful, uh, especially stuff like monitoring and, and uh, being able to send sysx files and whatnot easily. So um, thank you very much.